Breaking news this hour. Militants open fire on a crowd of civilian protesters in eastern Aleppo, killing at least 17 and injuring dozens more. People were demanding to be allowed to leave the eastern rebel-occupied part of the city. Protests and clashes with police mark Barack Obama's visit to Peru for the APEC summit as the outgoing president makes a final pitch for the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal. Also, the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church says Donald Trump's presidency opens up opportunities for a joint fight against terrorism. That's in an exclusive interview with RT. And as President-elect Trump starts to announce who'll take key posts in his administration, we look at the three he's chosen to date who all back legal moves against Hillary Clinton. Just gone midday here in the Russian capital this Saturday. This is RT International. My name's Yunan O'Neill. Welcome to the program. At least 17 people have been killed and over 40 injured in eastern Aleppo after militants broke up a protest march with machine gun fire. RT's Lizzie Phelan reports on what we know at this stage. Early this morning, the Russian Ministry of Defense has said that rebels in East Aleppo have killed at least 17 people, cracking down on yet more protests against militants blocking the escape routes from the besieged part of the city. The militants dispersed the demonstration, shooting at protesters with machine guns. 17 people died on site, including two teenagers. Over 40 people were wounded in total. They also abducted 10 men they considered to have been the ringleaders and then shot them the same night. Now this statement is the only report that we have of these alleged murders and indeed uh, that protests took place on Thursday. There's no mention in the statement of which faction in East Aleppo is allegedly responsible for these killings. Uh, and RT has spoken to locals in East Aleppo talking about the desperate situation that they're living in there uh, and unable to escape if they indeed decide that that's what they want to do. People came out here to demand that the terrorists let us get out. They started killing people, everyone who voiced their intention to leave this quarter. They killed up to 17 people. They killed children, women and elderly people. But in reality, there are no ISIL members. They are all from al-Nusra. Many have fled, but there are still a lot of us here. All we want is to leave, to escape the violence. We can't live like this anymore. But they won't let us leave. They guard the humanitarian corridors and fire at those trying to escape. They've killed 28 people. Well, as the situation in eastern Aleppo worsens, more and more calls for protests against the rebels' rule have been appearing on social media under the slogan, Leave or Let Us Leave. Investigative journalist Patrick Henningsen believes that the Western countries supporting the opposition groups are partly to blame for those atrocities. The uh, rebels, uh, mainly dominated by al-Nusra Front, are using the civilian population as human shields uh, in eastern Aleppo. This has been consistent reports all the way through. So this is a, a tragic event which has happened uh, today and yesterday. It, it really underlines th those reports. And this is an uh, important factor that has just been completely uh, omitted from all U.S. Uh, State Department statements, uh, John Kerry, uh, Samantha Power, Boris Johnson, the Foreign Secretary of the UK, no, and, and everyone who preceded them in their posts have just been, you know, ignoring this reality. And this is quite a serious thing. This toxic policy that's been adopted, led by Washington over the last five years, if this had been curtailed at some point in the last year or two, uh, then we wouldn't have this situation that we're seeing right now. They've been offering a lifeline to these so-called rebels now for far too long. And this is, the, this is the culmination of it. These are the people that Washington says are fit to govern if they overthrow Bashar al-Assad in Syria. This is how they would govern. And I think now the public can see this. These are Syrian people 
uh, on both sides, East Aleppo and West Aleppo. Uh, they're not pro-rebel. They're not pro-Assad. They are Syrian citizens, and clearly the ones in the East wanted to get back to have some semblance of life. They need food. They need shelter. They're tired of having East Aleppo occupied, and they tried to get out or tried to protest, and look what happened.